All right, welcome to Ames Public Library virtually for EcoChats, a program brought to you through a partnership with Ames Public Library in the city of Ames. I'm Megan Klein Hewitt, Adult Services Manager at Ames Public Library. I have a few details to share uh, about the technical aspects for tonight's program. We will be muting your microphones during the presentation, so please submit any questions you have via the chat function. You should find a link to that at the bottom of your screen. We will be monitoring the chat during the presentation, so make sure your questions get shared with the presenters when it's appropriate. And there will also be time for questions at the end. Today's session is being recorded and it will be posted to the Ames Public Library's YouTube channel. If you get bumped out of this meeting, please just follow the original link back and you'll be able to get right back in. I will post the link to the library's EcoChat webpage into the chat. There you'll find all of the information from last month's EcoChat, as well as information for tonight's presentation and more information about our upcoming events. So with that, please welcome Bill Schmidt, Superintendent of the City of Ames Resource Recovery Plant, who will introduce our speakers. Thank you, Megan. Really appreciate the library hosting this event. It's a wonderful event. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, tonight, we have three great presentations that are going to be put on. Uh, one is going to be by Lori Hansen on Yes, We Take Pianos. Uh, one from Carissa on Composting Curiosities unusual composting methods, which is a very interesting topic. And I'm just going to cover a little bit on resource recovery and some of the sustainability efforts that we do within the city of Ames with resource recovery. So we'll go on ahead and get started with uh, Lori Hansen and her presentation. Uh, Lori has been the secretary and educator for resource recovery. She has worked with the city for over 20 years. She is the lead person on engaging the public and telling the story of waste in Story County for more than 20 years. You may have seen her around the community doing presentations and talking to civic groups. If you would like her to visit your group, please reach out to her at 515-239-5137 to schedule a tour or a speaking engagement. Let me go on ahead and get started here with her presentation. And Lori, take it away. All right, can everybody hear me okay? All right, good. Um, uh, I get phone calls every day to see from people who want to see if we will take whatever. How do I get rid of blank? Well, we take pianos and we take lots of other stuff too. Following are some of the things resource recovery accepts. Not a complete list by any means. We'd be here all night. For instance, how do I get rid of paint? Well, the first question I'll ask you is, is it oil-based or is it latex? Because if it's latex paint, it's not hazardous, it's just annoying. And we will tell you that you need to get some cheap clay kitty litter or floor dry and stir that into the paint until it's good and stiff like a cookie dough or a putty and then leave it beside your regular garbage with the lid off and your garbage haul will pick it up as long as they can see that it is no longer a liquid. Now for the oil-based paints, that's different because oil-based paint is flammable in its liquid form. And so if you need to get rid of some of that, give us a call and we'll get you set up with the household hazardous waste appointment. What about tires? Yes, we take tires too. We accept them for recycling. We get Liberty Tire in Des Moines to come pick up tires and they take it to their facility in Des Moines. And from there, it becomes crumb rubber and that can be used in molded rubber goods or rubber flooring, rubberized asphalt and shock absorbing athletic surfaces as well as playground and landscape mulch. Glass, what is glass? Glass goes there in the bright yellow bins. You might find that you will find at both fairway stores in Ames and at the Ames Hy-Vee gas stations and at Aldi's on the west side of the building. There are other places in, uh, 
the county too, where you can find these yellow bins. We don't need glass in the garbage. It does not do us any good at the plant and it certainly doesn't do the power plant any good. And so if we keep that out of the garbage then we can get it recycled through ripple glass in Kansas City, Missouri. Appliances. Oh, my refrigerator died. What do I do with it? My freezer died. What do I do with it? Well, take the food out first because yeah, we don't want to smell it if it's been gone for a long time. But um, yeah, you can bring appliances to us for $20 or currently you can take them to Bell Salvage at 500 Freel Drive and they'll only charge you $10. Appliances have to be demanufactured and that just means that they have to take out whatever is bad in that in that uh, appliance like for instance in the refrigerator and the freezer it will have freon in the the coils to keep all the food cold and other appliances then might have a, a mercury switch in it to control when it shuts off or turns on again and then the appliance can be scrapped what do you do with batteries well i'll tell you Yesterday, we had three fires and they were all due to batteries, not the regular alkaline batteries. Those can still be thrown in the garbage, but the usual suspect is a lithium battery, a rechargeable battery, like button batteries or lead acid, well, NICAD batteries and lithium ion batteries. Once those break apart, the lithium in there is um, reactive to air and so it can start a fire. Once it goes through our shredder, it can become bent or broken, and then that starts the fire. We've even had a fire on the tipping floor from the loader bucket scraping across a button battery and starting the garbage on fire. You can bring any battery to us for recycling at no charge. And we, if you don't know if it's alkaline or rechargeable, then we can help you make that determination. Chemicals, look at all of that stuff. Do you recognize anything that you might have at your home? Like the charcoal lighter fluid. Yep, we have that. Um, solid color exterior stain. Yep, we have that. Liquid plumber. No, we don't have that. But I do have oven cleaner. So everybody's got this kind of stuff. It's auto products. It's, it's uh, lawn and garden products. It's pet products. And it's even cleaning products in your home. If it says warning, caution, flammable, inflammable, combustible, poison, or toxic, those are the items we're looking for. We don't want you to throw those away in the garbage, and we don't want you to dump them down the drain or put them down the sewer in the street. What we need you to do is give us a call and make an appointment to bring it to us on a Wednesday afternoon or a Saturday morning at no charge and give us a call and we can make sure that you're getting the right stuff into us so we can tell you what's hazardous and what's not hazardous. How about furniture? Tis the season. Tis the season. Students at Iowa State are getting ready to leave or, or getting already have flown the coop and they're just hanging out for the finals. But um, they call every day. Do you take mattresses and box springs? Yes, we do. I have a chair that's broken. You can bring it here to us. Our fees at the plant are $10 for a car load or $25 for a pickup load, which is the real bargain, I think. If it is still has some life left in it, you can still bring it to us at the plant and pay to get rid of it. And we'll put it in a storage unit to be included in our rummage rampage coming up at the end of July. There are tons of different kinds of light bulbs out there, aren't there? And um, I feel bad not using my in old incandescents that we had left over that we never used because we bought into the new LEDs. And I, I hate to throw them away, but we're not going to use them, obviously. Maybe I'll put them in the rummage ram page. But you can bring any light bulb that does not work into the resource recovery plant, even if it does work and you don't want it anymore. Go ahead and bring it into us and we'll take it for recycling, no charge. How do I get rid of propane fillers, cylinders? Maybe tis the season for that too. If you go out for your first night to grill and you turn on the tank and nothing happens, you're gonna have to go get it refilled or get another tank 
well, what do you do with the old tank then? Or if you were camping last year and had the smaller propane canisters, and now you're getting ready to go again, but you shake them and, oh, there's nothing in there. What do I do to get rid of them? Well, you call us and then we will tell you that you can bring them to us at no charge because we would rather find them when you put them in our hands than to have them go through the shredder and go kablooey, explode. And what do you do with an old American flag that's tattered and not fit to fly? It is a disgrace to see how many flags that we see coming in, in the, already in the garbage. And that's not how our flag was designed to get to its end of life. What we need to do is bring them here to us at Resource Recovery Plan or take them to the American Legion or the 40 and 8 Veterans Organization. Um, they, the 40 and 8 does a flag disposal ceremony as well as the American Legion does, and we partner with them to make sure that we can get these, these um, um, symbols of America um, properly disposed of. How about needles, lancets, or other sharps? There are a lot of diabetics out there. I am one myself, although I am not insulin dependent at this point. But I know a lot of cats who are also diabetic too. So you have a lot of needles sometimes and you've got to put them in a sharps container for safe disposal or a plastic laundry detergent jug bottle. And if you use the laundry detergent bottle, then once you've got it full, we ask you to put the cap on and duct tape it closed and write sharps on the tape so that we know exactly what it is. You can bring it into us anytime during our open hours, no appointment necessary, and we'll take them for you, no charge. A lot of people have been doing a lot of remodeling uh, during uh, the time that some of us have been home working from home. Um, it's, we look around while we're working and we think, oh, there's a project that I can do. Oh, there's a project that I can do or a honey-do list a half a mile long. But once they've done that remodeling, well, I got a new sink for the bathroom or a new sink for the kitchen. What do I do with the old one? You can bring that into us and we'll take that for you. We do take toilets and carpet and padding. But drywall, floor tile, linoleum, ceiling tile, insulation, windows and doors, what we would consider construction and demolition debris, um, that has to be taken to the Boone County landfill. If you've got a question in your mind as to whether or not we'll take it, give us a call and we'll, we'll help you determine that. I've cleaned out my closet. Well, that wasn't me talking, but somebody said that. They cleaned out their closet. What should I do with clothes and shoes that I don't want anymore or don't fit anymore? Take those, please, to Goodwill, Salvation Army, or Overflow Thrift Store. Various churches have clothing and shoe pantries as well as food pantries. You can just donate that stuff. And even if it's raggedy and you don't think it has any good anymore, Goodwill cuts them up for rags. And then they sell them to people who need rags. For instance, um, we need rags at the plant because guess what? It's dirty there with a bunch of garbage. So we need a lot of rags. Old medicines. I had a, a lady call me today who said she had some old medication and over-the-counter medication as well as prescribed medication. And I asked her to please take that to the Ames Police Department or her pharmacy. Either one will have a drug drop-off box. In the police department, it's in their lobby. It's a metal box, it looks just like that. That's a picture of that same box. And uh, pharmacies have boxes too that you can put that kind of stuff in. We do not want to take those. Electronics. Doesn't it seem like just when you get your computer just the way you want it, something goes wonky and you have to go out and get a new one? Yes, or cell phones. Yes, Di my cell phone died or I have to get a new one because this one's not blingy enough or whatever. We will take the old electronics for you, particularly if it's a laptop, we need you to check to make sure that the battery is not on there because that's one of those batteries that will start a fire. 
a cell phone, make sure that battery is on there or just give it to us and we'll take it and make sure that the battery gets recycled. We also take uh, TVs, even the old console TVs. But first, try Best Buy and Staples to see if they will take it for you. And if they don't take it, we will take it. Old tube TVs, do any, anybody remember seeing those? I do, and even black and white TVs. But then I'm a dinosaur, so. But people still have them in their homes in the basement and they don't know what to do with them. They wanna get rid of it, but they don't know what to do. Give us a call. We will take two for $10 per residence per day. And that includes the big computer monitors as well. Now you got a bunch of outdoor furniture or toys and stuff that your kids are all grown up now and, and the grandkids are half grown up and nobody wants to play in those things anymore. We will take it if you can't find a home for it. Put it on um, Story County Reuse It or Story County Free Cycle and, or even some of the swap site, sites that are out there now. And um, See if anybody wants it off of there. There's a lot of kids out there who need some of this stuff. Food waste. How much food do you throw away? Hmm. That's a, that's a question. A lot. We, as we have seen in the garbage, when we did a waste sort, food waste was way up there in, uh, or organic materials, um, were right up there as being one of the worst things that's in the garbage or the most percentage of what's in the garbage. And composting is good for a lot of reasons. It, it's the, it goes back to the soil that it came from. And if you have a large amount of food from one event, then see if food at first wants it. And if not them, check with the Bridge Home. It used to be the Emergency Residence Project, but now it's called the Bridge Home. Compost if you can. If you're not in a position to have a compost bin or a compost pile, check out our food waste diversion program. All you need is a bucket. And when it's full of your food waste, you can bring it down to the plant and dump it into the, the uh, container that is at 410 East 2nd Street on the northeast corner of the plant. It's kind of pinkish. Many things, as I said, can go to Goodwill, the Salvation Army, to Overflow Thrift Store, area churches, check with friends and relatives. I can't tell you how many times I wore hand-me-downs. Habitat for Humanity, if you've got furniture or usable office stuff, see if anybody will take it for you before we should be your last resort to getting rid of things that you don't want. We have a lot of stuff. I have a lot of stuff. Everybody I think has a lot of stuff. And here's how you can decrease the amount of, of waste that you produce, the stuff that you throw away. Don't buy or use disposable goods. Use cloth bags or reuse grocery bags. Resealable containers like Tupperware or, or Rubbermaid instead of baggies. And please don't buy bottled water. Use coffee mugs or a personal water bottle. Pretty much everybody's got their own water bottle by now. Use cloth napkins instead of paper napkins. Use dishcloths and towels instead of paper towel. I have seen on some of the do-it-yourself sites that you can roll up your, your dish towels and button them to the next one or Velcro, and then roll it up so that it's like on a roll of paper towels. And you can just take them right off of there and use them from there. Buy products in bulk only when you're sure that you'll use it all. Everybody, a lot, well, not everybody, but a lot of people go to the uh, big market stores, Sam's Club and Costco, and they buy way more than they could ever use. And three years later, they're looking at it thinking, wow, I should have not done that. How am I going to get rid of it now? Well, give us a call. Anything that you want to get rid of, you can call us and we can tell you where it should go, where it needs to go. And call me at 239-5137 if you have any questions at all.
there are no stupid questions. If you don't know the answer, it's a good question. Thank you, Lori. Really appreciate that. That's a lot of information in a really short amount of time. And good thing I talk fast. <laughs> Our next presenter is Carissa. She's a fifth year senior at Iowa State in civil engineering and a concurrent MBA program. While at Iowa State, she founded the compost team, which implemented the first residential compost system at Iowa State at Fredericton Court in September of 2020. In its first year, the compost system attracted 120 Freddy Court residents and 850 pounds of food waste, which is just fantastic that first year. She will be graduating in four days. Woo woo, and congratulations. Uh, and moving on to pursue her business, Core Living Compost, a food waste pickup service for the Ames community through participation in the Site Starters program this summer. So, Krista, welcome, and we're looking forward to your presentation. Thanks, Bill. All right, so tonight we're going to be talking about composting curiosities. So I'm going to be bringing up some unusual composting methods you may or may not have heard about. So when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about under the theme of uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, I was thinking about the traditional composting methods. So you guys probably recognize these. You have uh, maybe a big pile out back or you have, you know, a nice wooden homemade do-it-yourself type of system in your backyard or you've purchased maybe something from um, Home Depot or, you know, some type of the um, home stores out there or perhaps you're already participating in the Ames Food Waste Diversion Program. But I thought instead of talking about that, which I'm quite passionate about and we can talk about again if you'd like, I thought we'd get a little outside of the bin, so to say. <laughs> so I will be talking about um, two types of composting methods and then more about an unusual um, thing that is composted that I learned recently about that I thought you might be intrigued to learn about. So let's start out with the first composting method. This is black soldier larva and flies. I recently attended a U.S. Compost Council webinar where one of the guys told us about his black soldier fly operations. Um, at first, I was a little grossed out and wasn't quite sure why someone would want to use larvae and flies to compost, but by the end, he kind of convinced me how I could see that this could be um, an option to compost. So here are some interesting facts about um, this style of composting. So you first have your black soldier larva. Uh, these are in the picture <laughs> um, and um, you can buy them in bulk um, on basically Amazon or any of those um, types of stores online. Um, and you have a big bin that is built. And larva, this larva loves fatty foods and meat. Um, so if you've done your own personal composting, usually you can't put meat in. And so it's really unusual to find a type of composting where you actually, um, it loves meat and food. Um, they are super quick, quick eaters, as I'll show you in a video um, a little bit later in the next slide. Um, and then they also uh, like a warm temperature environment. So <laughs> unfortunately or fortunately for us, um, you can't do black soldier fly um, composting here in Iowa because of winter. Um, so they have to be in a humid and warm condition. Um, but they really thrive in that. Um, and they have a 47 day life cycle. And so in the first stages, you will feed them your food waste, the larva, and it'll eat it up super quick. And then they'll turn into black soldier flies, which are native to Florida. So you don't have to worry about these being invasive species or anything. And by the end of their 47 days, uh, interesting fact is that adult black soldier flies can't eat. They use their, they lose their ability to use, to eat. Um, so basically they eat as larva, turn into uh, flies, mate, and then die of starvation. So what a sad life cycle but we get the benefits of the larva after um, about 
um, a few weeks is really great um, in being used for uh, chicken and fish feed. Um, so usually this type of composting is connected with your other farm operations. Um, if you lived somewhere in the country and also had chickens and or fish. Um, and yeah, that is really what the black soldier fly uh, composting method is. So uh, maybe there's some people out there that enjoy larvae um, or different things like that, but it's quite interesting on how it's done um, to get you some compost material. So this is a video uh, to show you about how quickly they can destroy a McDonald's burger. <laughs> so Bill, you can get the real rolling. So this is a time lapse of, um, yep, just put a burger right in with all 4,500 larvae, I think um, it said. Yep, so they just go right after that patty and the lettuce. Hopefully everyone's eaten <laughs> and like this doesn't gross you out or anything like that. But yeah, so this is over, I believe, two days. They just destroy this hamburger. It's incredible. Um, so yeah, so that is, as you can see, uh, the real advantage to uh, black soldier larva and flies. The next we'll be talking about our second method, which is Bokashi. Um, some of you, I feel like this one is, uh, can be, some people have heard of it, some people haven't, but Bokashi method is uh, a way for people to compost, um, start the composting process indoors. So uh, Bokashi can be, <clears throat> is a mix that can be either bought in or um, we even in the compost team did an experiment where uh, we made our own bokashi. Um, and really, uh, bokashi, the ingredients are called fluff. So your fluff can be wheat bran, wheat germ, rice bran, different things like that. Um, and then you put it with water, sugar, and then the main ingredient is microorganisms. So we bought ours on Amazon, just a bottle of and that was a liquid that had different microorganisms in it. And so what you do is you put a layer of your food waste and then a layer of um, your bokashi, and then you seal it and just let it sit uh, for about two weeks and you drain the liquid throughout and also keep adding those layers of food waste and your bokashi. Um, and as you can see, they also stamp it down as well. So using these layers of food waste and bokashi and the fermentation um, process um, is really how you get your um, halfway done compost is what I call it. Um, so after two weeks, then you take your bokashi and food waste mix and you have to go outside and bury it in the soil or in your garden or um, some place like that. As we figured out in our experiment, uh, we were under the assumption that Bokashi did the whole composting process, but we learned very quickly that after three weeks, you definitely wanna take it outside because when it ferments, uh, it creates smell after a certain amount of weeks. And so we figured that out the hard way. So I'm here giving you the tip now, if you ever wanted to try Bokashi to make sure to take it outside <laughs> after two weeks. But if you were thinking that fermenting means alcohol is made, I just, you know, a little side note, side joke, wanted to let you know that no, no alcohol is made from, <laughs> from the Bokashi method, even though it's fermenting, so. Yeah, and that will lead us to our last and final topic, which kind of blew my mind as an unusual method of, of something to compost, um, is I recently just learned about um, in the state of Washington, um, within this year, it was legalized for human composting as a form of, um, of burial. And so, um, the company that really initiated this movement what is called Recompose, um, and their founder has developed a way to uh, compost human bodies. Crazy, really, really crazy, blew my mind. So 
how the process works is um, the bodies are brought in and there is an optional service in which um, people can say goodbye to their loved ones out at, um, out at their center. Um, and then the body is put into, uh, put into a bed of, I believe it's alfalfa, um, wood chips, and uh, I think leaves as well, and is put into a bed of leaves and uh, this whole mix, um, and then slid into a vessel. Um, you can see in the background of the picture, these are the vessels themselves. And so those circular parts pull out and that is where the body is laid. And then in um, the duration of 30 days, um, the body, uh, there's air that is um, put into this pressurized vessel, um, as well as um, the microorganisms that are already in that material that the body is laid on, and the body is composted due to this regulated temperature in 30 days. Um, and so then, once the body is um, composted, uh, the family is given back their one yard of compost, or this can also be donated to a forest in Washington. The family doesn't want the compost, and it's one yard. Um, there's no bones left. Um, if they had any, if like, um, you know, fake teeth or hip replacements or, or things that aren't organic, then these are taken out um, beforehand. Um, or they're filtered after they're composted, so you only get the compost uh, returned to you. Um, but yeah, you may be wondering, what is the demand for uh, humans to be composted? Um, what, yeah, what value do people see in this, um, as well as the founder? And so um, what was interesting to me to discover is that um, when looking at the two common ways for um, humans to be buried, it's either a casket or cremation um, currently, or donating your body to science, but it usually comes back to you or comes back um, as we know. And so with the two, let's stick to caskets or, and cremation. With caskets, um, the this requires cutting down a tree itself to be made into the casket, or um, also this wood is usually treated to avoid it breaking down very fast. And so this is um, chemicals being put on. Um, also, um, then with cremation, as we can imagine, um, this involves um, fire and energy and putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere when um, the body is cremated. And so with these things, as long as with um, other, other various things involved with the common ways of burial at this time, this is um, the environmental impact is reduced with human composting and even our bodies are given back to the soil and be given back to the earth. Um, so if you're wondering what is the price of this process, it is $5,500. And so um, on their site, uh, Recompose's site, they explain that um, with the cost of cremation and other, um, other parts of um, various things that are in the common process, that this is actually quite affordable. And so anyway, with that in mind, um, this was something that I'm still coming to terms with on, you know, if I want to be composted or what that looks like. And I'm even passionate about, about composting and I'm still not sure about this. So anyway, um, it was something very interesting um, that, to learn about. And with that, um, if you want to, you know, these are a lot of unusual things. So if you want less unusual ways to compost, you can always contact me. Um, so as Bill said, I was the founder of the compost team and now um, I'm going to be uh, moving on, hoping to make composting a career and I'll be starting uh, Core Living Compost, a food waste pickup service. So really connecting you if you wanna get involved with the food waste diversion program, um, I will be able to pick up your bucket from your doorstep and deliver it to Ames Resource Recovery and also just looking in different ways to really connect Ames community to composting this summer. So um, with that, feel free to always, uh, if you want to email me to get on the list for, for this service this summer. Um, but otherwise than that, um, I'm always jumping for joy as the picture shows for composting. So I'm always just happy to talk or connect with you um, on anything related to composting. So with that, I hope I didn't gross you out 
or um, make you really not think composting is for you. But these, um, that is what I have for tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it. Great presentation of some very interesting topics. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm Bill Schmidt. I'm the superintendent at the Arnold Old Chantland Resource Recovery Plan. I've been working at the facility for almost nine years and enjoy working with an engaged and motivated team. We look for responsible, sustainable local solutions for waste diversion and landfill avoidance. With that, I thought I would give just kind of a quick overview of resource recovery uh, and some of the things we do. Uh, You've all probably heard about reduce, reuse, and recycle. Uh, I wanted to add a fourth R, uh, and that's recovery. If I'd spelled it right, it'd be even better. Uh, recover is what they talk about, recover of energy. Uh, as you look uh, at the waste hierarchy, and we'll get into that a little bit more, it goes through the different things that EPA really wants us to do as we look at waste and how we can avoid it. Uh, the resource recovery facility is the oldest waste energy facility municipally operated in the United States of America. Even though it's the oldest facility started in 1975, we have continually done numerous upgrades to the plant, uh, both mechanically with technology uh, to keep us current with uh, waste energy technology that's out there uh, throughout the uh, world. Um, as I talked a little bit about the waste hierarchy. As you can see here, uh, there's most preferred to least preferred. And most preferred is so source reduction and reuse. That's kind of what Lori talked about. Do we need to buy those things? Can we use regular plates and silverware rather than plastic plates or plastic silverware or paper plates? Uh, how can we reduce our footprint? Recycling and compost, as Chris had just talked about, there's a lot of ways to do composting uh, besides just a bin in the backyard. Uh, these are different ways to reduce your footprint. Uh, the next level, according to the EPA, is energy recovery. And that's what the city of Ames has been doing for almost 46 years now. After people have reduced what they buy, recycled, composted, the material that's left, we take that material in here and we grind it up. We recover that energy from it and reduce the amount of material that goes to landfill. And as I said, that's something the city has been doing for 46 years now. We're really kind of innovators in that area. A little bit of additional history with resource recovery. There's not been a landfill in Story County receiving municipal solid waste since 1996. The city did own a landfill and received material in there until that time. Uh, resource recovery is responsible for the maintenance of the landfill, managing the integrity of the cap of the landfill, and handling the leachate generator from decomposing waste. We monitor the groundwater around the, the landfill and also inside the landfill. We've been working with the Iowa Department of Natural Resources for some time now. Uh, we had a 30-year closure permit, and we're going to be able to uh, transition out of that 30-year permit uh, probably this year, even sooner than anticipated, because of the stability of the landfill and the work and care that's been put into the landfill with the design of it and how it's been maintained, uh, and it's going to transition to environmental covenants. What that means is that we won't have to do as much sampling because the stability of the water over the past uh, decade has been very stable. Uh, there's been no change in it. Uh, we'll still be responsible for maintenance and maintaining the landfill but it gives us that opportunity to uh, uh, reduce the amount of time uh, and effort needed there. Uh, the resource recovery plant is owned by the city of Ames and is managed by the public works department. Uh, it's a little bit different than most city departments. The fact that 14 different government agencies throughout the county, county send their waste to us. Uh, these bring in post consumer recycled waste to us to use for processing. Uh, we work with almost all the communities in Story County rural areas to make sure that their waste is handled in an environmental and sound manner. Resource recovery is just a piece of the waste energy system in Story County. 
As I said, we receive the waste, we grind it, we remove ferrous metal, non-ferrous metal. We have an eddy current system that pulls the aluminum, copper, and brass out. Uh, those metals make up almost 5% of what people throw away, and we're able to keep that out of the landfill. We separate out the burnable portion, and that goes over to the power plant. That's another part of the waste energy system. They take that burnable portion and they combust it with natural gas to generate electricity so they will reduce the amount of natural gas is needed to generate electricity. The unburnable material uh, is sent to the Boone County landfill where it's buried over there. Uh, it takes up much less space in the landfill because we grind it up and it's reduced in volume. So 70 to 75% of what people send to us, we're able to keep out of the landfill. And uh, we've been doing that now for almost 46 years. Some of the other things we've done over the years is, over the last 20 years, we've kept 580,000 tons of material out of the landfill. This is the RDF that power plant is used to generate electricity. This is in replace of coal and now natural gas that we've been able to reduce the amount of energy that has been needed to generate electricity. Over the last 20 years, 37,000 tons of metal have been recycled. That's just an extreme amount of metal. The glass program has only been in place for 11, 12 years, and we recycled 2,200 tons of glass. In just the last two years alone, we've been able to keep 56,000 pounds of household hazardous materials out of the waste. And these are some of the things that Lori talked about, those items that you don't know what to do with, or uh, it's quite often we get a call and somebody say, I just moved into the house and there's all these chemicals in the garage or these 15 cans of paint in the basement, what do I do with them? Uh, and that's what we're here for, to make sure that those get handled responsibly, keep them out of the waste stream and keep them out of the environment. As Lori talked a little bit about the uh, food waste diversion program and Carissa touched a little bit on it too. Uh, it's only been in place for just a little over a year now. And that amount of time we did kept almost 14 tons of food waste out of the landfill last year, which is fantastic because once that material goes to the landfill, it generates methane, which is even more dangerous uh, greenhouse gas. So we're glad to be able to offer that service and keep that material out. We're working uh, with the water and pollution control plant right now to see how we can take that food waste that people bring into our facility and introduce it directly into the anaerobic digesters that they have at their facility just south of town. With that, they can collect the methane directly off of that and use that to generate electricity or heat or the anaerobic digesters to allow uh, a much more uh, local solution rather than transporting it down to Southeast Iowa where it's composted currently. You have all been great participants and helped out over the last few years on great pumpkin disposal. Uh, last year we had 17,000 pounds that were collected, people brought to us. And as you can imagine, pumpkins really do not make very good fuel. They, uh, uh, make quite a mess, and we're able to offer, glad we were able to offer this, and I'm so appreciative of folks taking the time to bring those pumpkins down to us. So in the fall, we'll usually start a little bit before Thanksgiving or before Halloween. We'll run until after Thanksgiving for those people to have those Halloween and uh, uh, fall harvest uh, uh, decorations out, and we're glad to take those materials and make sure that they get composted and handled properly. Rummage Rampage, Lori talked a little bit about that. That has been a fantastic event for us. Uh, we've uh, ran it uh, five years now. We weren't able to do it last year. Uh, we did it two years ago, and during that time, we were able to keep over 116,000 pounds out of the landfill and raise $33,000 for nonprofits who staff the event. Uh, it's run at the Intermodal Center, Center uh, 129 Hayward Avenue, just south of Friday Hall. It'll be from July 31st through August 7th this year. Uh, you can find out more information on the City of Ames website on resource recovery. Uh, we look for people to donate items, look for people to volunteer and just spread the word. So as you start looking around and see that you've got things that you need to get out of your house, think of us and bring it on down. Some of the other things we do, Lori talked about the flag retirement, waste audit, yes, we take garbage and take bucket loads of it and sort through it and see what's in it. It's not a very glamorous job, 
but that's how we know what's in our garbage, what people are throwing away and what we need to look at, look at and try to reduce. That's where we really have that focus now on the food waste diversion. Waste diversion study, we looked at ways to increase the diversion of what goes to landfill. We are just in the process of starting a waste energy option study uh, that will be kicking off here next week, looking at how we can improve the amount of material that uh, is diverted from landfill and how we can do it in an even better or more sustainable way. We have rebate forms for compost bins that we do with smart watersheds uh, that you can get a $50, up to a $50 rebate for a compost system that you put in at your house. Just need to keep the receipts and take a picture of it, fill out the form. We're glad to work with you on that. We do a lot of outreach, as Lori talked about, uh, elementary schools. We participate with Stash and Trash, uh, river cleanups. We used to work with uh, Skunk River Navy when they were still around. Now we work with Story County Paddlers. Uh, we work with Iowa State University. Our Department of Natural Resource does a river cleanup every year called Project Aware. They reached out to us because they get dirty plastic out of the river and they can't recycle it. Uh, and they hated to throw that plastic away. They're bringing that material to us now and we're able to include that with our material and use it to generate electricity. Eco fairs, eco chats like we have here. We do a lot of things uh, internally. Um, on our tipping floor, we've got very large uh, loaders out there. They're actually hybrid electric loaders. They generate electricity that it's used to run the wheels uh, and are much more efficient than the smaller loaders that we had. We use larger loader, we use less fuel uh, and less wear and tear on it. It's been very good for it. Uh, the building, even though it's a 46 year old building, we put LED lighting throughout the building to reduce our energy usage. We switched out our primary shredder to put in a hydraulically driven motor. So we went from a thousand horsepower motor to two small uh, 240 volt motors, which works out extremely well. We do a lot of things internally. We put in a new HVAC system with an energy recover. Uh, we put in energy efficient windows. We used to use 30 yard roll offs. We went to 40 yard roll offs. So we can haul 33% more with each trip with the truck. Uh, in our pollinator gardens, we put a lot of perennials to help the uh, butterflies and bees and uh, reduce our uh, dependence on water and fertilizer. Uh, as Lori talked about, we use shop rags made from discarded clothing. Our marketing materials we try to use from recycled materials where we give away key chains that are made out of bicycle chain and bamboo. Uh, we're a collection hub for glass. Boone County, Marshall County, Hamilton County, and Story County bring their glass over to us. And then we work with Ripple Glass to haul it out of here. So once again, reducing that carbon footprint. We've got bile soil to reduce storm water and improve water quality. Uh, Pale Blue Dot just finished the greenhouse gas inventory here uh, last year. And they kind of talked about the same thing that EPA talked about, that, that energy recovery has a lower greenhouse gas emission with the RDF combustion than just putting it in the landfill. Uh, there's a 48% higher uh, net rate for RDF, uh, for landfilling versus RDF. And they talked about the recommendations for waste reduction, recycling, composting, and maximizing waste, effic waste efficiency. And that's what we're doing here. We're trying to do education on the waste reduction Recycling, composting, Chris has got a wonderful business she's starting, trying to help people to increase and make it easier for them to do those uh, composting efforts. I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit of what other countries and nations do throughout the world. Uh, this is a new waste energy facility that was opened in Copenhagen, Denmark. It's called Copenhill. And your eyes do not deceive you. That is a ski slope on the top of the waste energy facility. They have a climbing wall that people can climb the outside. They've got trails. They've got a craft brewery up here on the top. Uh, and this is a park around it. Uh, they really embrace waste energy and look at that as part of the community and how they can make it uh, uh, a, a, a good part of the community that people want to be around. Uh, in Vienna, Austria, uh, this is another waste energy facility. It almost looks like a children's museum. I mean, it's it's whimsical, it's very colorful, and it really uh, shows things and ways that uh, waste energy can be incorporated in communities. A number of upcoming events we have going on. There's a community tree planting coming up on May 15th. 
You can call Paul Talkie at 239-5342 if you'd like to be part of that. The mayor's bike ride is May 15th at 9 a.m. Bike to work week is May 17th. There's gonna be a grab and go breakfast from seven to 9 a.m. on the east side of City Hall. Uh, additional upcoming eco chats uh, are in June, July, and August for water, watersheds, electric. And on May 27th, there's gonna be a ribbon cutting for Welch Avenue, what you're thinking. Okay, they rebuilt the street. Why is that uh, a sustainable item? They really did a lot of work and a lot of the design efforts there around stormwater runoff improvements. And I think it's a really a good way of showing how we can put new technology and incorporate that with existing infrastructure and make it work and make it uh, really a, a really nice and usable product project. So that's all I've got. We'll open it up for questions and see what we've got. Perfect. Thank you, Bill. We do have some good questions already, uh, a few of which have been answered in the chat. I'm going to try and pull out some that have not yet been answered. Uh, Kathy asked, does Ames Recovery ever get extra building materials like lumber or plywood pieces? And if so, what do they do with them? We, that's one of the things, as Lori talked about, we really do not accept those. Um, so most of what we get are if someone has a bad section on their fence that blows down, that's rotten, that's what we get. Uh, I know that's one thing that's been brought up. People would like to see a kind of a place for people to lumber that they don't need, that they could kind of do an exchange. Uh, we haven't figured out how to do that, but that's something we definitely uh, would love to find a good way of doing that. And if anyone has any ideas, Please feel free to reach out and give us an idea. Awesome. And this is Lori again. And I did answer the question and I asked, or I said, try Story County, reuse it or free cycle or list it on one of the swap shots, uh, swap, swap sites that are all over the internet. People are out there wanting some of this stuff. So list it first and then see if somebody doesn't take it. Awesome. Thank you both. Uh, I think there is somebody looking for a little clarification about the black fly larva. If they need a different climate than we have in Iowa, do people do this in Iowa? Do they bring the process inside? Yes, so we had someone ask that question in the webinar I was watching and he said, unless you have a way to um, control the flies and where they will go. Um, so if you have like larva contained and then the flies contained as well, um, you could do it inside. Um, but he said he found that he would like find flies in other parts of his house and didn't really recommend that for people. So unfortunately, um, inside is a little bit of a hazard unless you don't mind flies <laughs> going around. All right, uh, Lisa asks, how does the city connect with apartment landlords, residents, and ISU students to encourage participate in Rummage Rampage or other donation and repurposing programs? I always see usable goods sitting out with trash cans. It's frustrating that with all of the great resources and donation centers we have here in Ames, people are still choosing to discard. One of the things we do is we work, uh, there's quite a landlord's association and group in the city. The city has a list of everyone who's registered uh, as a rental, they have to have their properties inspected. Uh, and we send out information to them uh, as we get close to Rummage Rampage, reminding them of that opportunity to send out, we get them some flyers that they can post for their residents uh, to let them know about the event. Uh, unfortunately, and we, we get great response to that. But unfortunately, there's some people either don't have the way to get the material there or just don't care. And, and those are how we people are really trying to reach and work with. We do have a, a pickup service that we offer uh, for those that can't get the material there. That is certainly a way to uh, get material to the event. Great. How should oh, the chat moved? How should clothing that's no longer wearable, like old down or fiber filled jackets, be disposed of? And what about old bedding, quilts, or bed spreads? Uh, old bedding quilts, sorry, Bill, old bedding quilts and bedspreads can be donated to the animal shelter. They need it for the animals in their cages. It helps it feel more like a home. And, uh, but, but for the other ones, the parkas and, and downfilled things, if it's not good enough to go to Goodwill or Overthrow, Overflow Thrift Store or Salvation Army, then yes, maybe it should be thrown away. 
but give us a call first or try to find a home for it through one of the churches. Great. I also volunteered at Overflow and if we found pieces of clothing that uh, weren't good enough to put out in the store, they put them into rolls of um, just all the clothing stuffed into one roll where it gets broken down in a different place. Um, that was a few years ago. I'm not sure if they still do that, but um, it was cool to see them be able to take then that um, that jacket that doesn't have a life and be able to bring it to a different place to be used for breaking down that material. Great. Uh, what are the proper methods for disposing of cooking oil? Cooking oil, you can bring to us anytime we're open and we'll get that recycled and taken care of, no problems. We're open, I should say, we're open Monday through Friday, 7 to 3.30 and Saturday from 8 to noon. Perfect. Okay, well, I'll give folks a moment to put more questions in the chat if they have any, but I think Lori has certainly proven that she is <laughs> a wealth of information about how to dispose of um, or recycle or reuse um, materials. So we should all be calling Lori. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've learned. 239-5137. <laughs> Give me a call. Perfect. All right. And seeing no other questions, I think we will thank our speakers. Oh, ah, see somebody always throws one in right when I'm going to close things out. How is food waste from ISU Dining and Ames Schools lunch programs disposed of? Uh, I can answer ISU Dining. So um, Iowa State, uh, since 2008, has their own compost facility just for Iowa State operations. So yeah, they bring all of ISU Dining's pre and post consumer waste out to their compost facility, which is a few miles off campus. Um, I believe Ames School lunch programs don't have anything yet. I was reached out to on like, could we begin a partnership and be able to help um, bring composting to the schools? But unless anyone else has any information on that, I believe they don't compost as of now. I had a question um, a few beyond or earlier than that, and that's about government funds that are coming our way and communities need to be talking about where, uh, where our needs are. And I thought maybe Bill or someone would um, look into their, what would they like to have? You just showed us some really novel um, buildings in other countries that have done some wonderful things. Um, what would you use some of that government funding to help our city with in your area? Sure, that, that's a great question. Um, as most funds that come, there are many times stipulations with them on how they can be spent, what they can be spent on, if there needs to be matching money uh, with that. And, and that's something that we always need to take a look at uh, and see uh, what, uh, how, how they can be utilized. Uh, as I said, we're in the process of really evaluating at least five different options for waste energy moving forward with the city of Ames. Uh, and hopefully the consultant has some other ideas that they can potentially take a look at. And I think that may be something that we'd want to take a look at is see what the consultant comes up with ideas or ways that we can, um, there's, there's always ways to do things better. And, and that's why we're really looking for some of those experts in the industry and help us figure out how we can design even a better system and uh, make it be uh, sustainable. Great question. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for all of those really great questions um, that really help us better understand our, our community's sort of waste disposal options. Uh, so we will thank our presenters tonight for sharing all of their expertise and their information. And I hope that you all can join us for next month's Eco Chat. Like Bill mentioned, the subject is water and that is on Tuesday, June 1st. So hope to see everyone there. Thanks for joining us tonight.